Hey guys, I'm back. Friday morning, uh, 8.55 a.m. Thought I'd give you a little update on Hurricane, well, Tropical Storm Florence. Uh, as you can see, the uh, hype has gone away for now anyway. And at least on AccuWeather, they're reporting it as a tropical storm with sustained wind speeds of uh, 65 miles an hour which is still overinflated. This is on the uh, windy.com 8 a.m. rating. Uh, I got it on the GFS 22km model. That's the USA satellite. And then this one's the European forecast model. This, the GFS tends to be the more aggressive one. So I'm showing you the highest wind speeds according to GFS on Windy, which is 41 knots sustained, which uh, if you take it to the convert to miles per hour, it's uh, times 1.15 equals 47.15 miles per hour. And I got it over here on Venture Sky, also 8 a.m. today, Friday. Got it on the GFS model. And here I can see where they might be pulling their uh, 65 mile an hour tropical storm wind speed on AccuWeather anyway. I don't know what weather channels reporting because uh, as I mentioned I have Verizon Fios cable and uh, they discontinued the weather channel and I'm stuck with AccuWeather unfortunately but nonetheless uh, it's nice to see that they have uh, taken it down from a cat 4 to now just a tropical storm <laughs> unbelievable okay uh, I pulled up Null School too just to show you where they're at and I can't get any um, projections on this one, but here I got it punched up on sea level pressure. Now that's one thing that they're over-reporting or hyping, because as you can see here, it's at 10.10 uh, 10 HPA, which is quite uh, low. I think they got reported down in the 980s, something like that. And uh, same goes for Venture Sky. Even on the GS GFS model, 1009. So let's get back to these models. Here we have the models over here. Now if you punch on automatic, that sort of gives you a hybrid of the uh, icon plus the her, which I think is fairly pretty accurate. But anyway, you see the pressure is still the same. And this will give you the... Uh, if you click on this eye, it gives you the information about these particular satellite readings. Well, nonetheless, and this is the GEM model, which that's out of Canada. And you can see that's still pretty much the same, but you get fewer uh, options on that one. But if you punch up the wind speed on the GEM Canadian model, this matches more with uh, the windy, even at the GFS. Now, if you punch it down to the European simulation uh, satellite model, you get uh, you get it lower. I think 34, 38, okay, there's 38, 38 times 1.15, that's 43.7 miles per hour, so we go back to Venture Sky, and I just put it on automatic for now, and it's so, most of the models are reporting that's under 50, but like I said, if you go to their most aggressive model, which is the US GFS, you can get readings up here in the north 
north quadrant up as high as 66 miles per hour okay now I was looking through these uh, projections and the date that it's going to impact closest to the US on the GFS model we got it making landfall 8 a.m. well maybe more like 5 a.m. next Thursday pretty close and you can see these wind speed numbers are awfully high which I don't think that's going to be that that high because if you go according to these other models we'll pull up windy and we'll take it over to Thursday at 5 a.m. Now this is on the European satellite run. And you can see we got a couple other things popping here. This must be the H and the I that are coming off Africa. So that's pretty close to a hurricane speed there. But anyway, we'll focus on that later. So if you look at the European run, it's going to impact it around South Carolina. And this one good thing, cool thing about this Wendy website, you can punch up on these uh, webcams so you can actually see what the weather looks like if they leave them up. But anyway, uh, so let's go zoom in a little bit further. So you got 68 knots. Usually the uh, this thing's a little glitchy. You get too close. So 68 knots. Usually that highest wind speed tends to be on this north northeast section or north section. So you get 68, 69 uh, knots. That's on the um, European model. So we go 69 times 1.15. So you got 79.35 miles per hour coming into South Carolina Thursday morning early. So let's see what midnight looks like. So yeah, so we're looking at around Thursday around 5 a.m. That's when South Carolina is going to be impacted according to this European model. Now, as far as precip goes, you can see the precip's pretty light. Here's the uh, precip scale, color scale. So you can see like 0.15 inches, and this is over a three hour period. So, like I'm, I was pointing out to you, this dry air, which here's uh, Florence, and this is the uh, on the Colorado State.edu RAM slider. This just gives you the same. Uh, Go 16 pictures as you get here on the NOAA site, but the color coding's a little different. And this one's been a little glitchy this morning. So we'll look at this one. So, anyway, here's the dry air. You can see they got it represented by temperature. Same deal with NOAA site. They got a temperature scale down here. But as I was explaining earlier on the last video, Hurricane Florence, the real story. See, all this stuff here is dry air. And that's what when the, the weather people refer to these uh, upper level winds that are ripping apart storms. And really, basically, it's the dry air ripping apart these storms. Because, like I had mentioned, the chemtrails are uh, 
alkaline salts based so that they can attract moisture and form clouds quickly. Of course, they have other things in them too. God knows what. We know for sure aluminum, strontium, and barium from uh, reports I've seen of soil samples taken <coughs> and so forth. And a few insider maybe reports. You don't get too much insider info on chemtrails. They got pretty much a lid on that stuff. But anyway, people have been pouring out vinegar, which has acetic acid in it. And the acetic acid and the alkaline salts that they're using in these chemtrails are apparently uh, polar opposites chemically. So the acetic acid is attracted like with a quickness to the uh, alkaline salts based clouds. In fact, you can even pour vinegar outside and when it's raining during a heavy rainstorm and it'll, it'll uh, you'll see an immediate effect. Matter of fact, it will uh, cut the lightning too. Because what we have going on here is, uh, I'll punch up the CAPE index. This is on the Null School site. You can see, uh, here's the CAPE index. They measured in joules per kilogram. So you can see it's really low. And this conforms to, there's Florence, see all the dry air? And then you got the low joules per kilogram. The reason for that is when the uh, chemical reaction takes place between the acetic acid and the vinegar or in the atmosphere, when it reacts with the alkaline salts based chemtrail clouds, the chemical reaction uses up a lot of the atmospheric potential energy so uh, that's what you have going on there now if you punch this back to uh, that's the GFS model like I said that's the most aggressive now when you get out in this forecasting beyond a few days the only you can only access two models on this uh, Venture sky so there's the Canadian model punch that up and that conforms more to the European model and as you can see here the wind speeds are much less and it's still pretty far off the coast there's the precip precip they're showing a little bit more aggressive on the precip on this Canadian model on the GFS model and the precip's pretty well wound real tight and I just don't see the uh, wind speed being this strong within the eye because usually the eye is the quieter part and out here is the higher wind speed just to the north northeast of the eye so there's no way this model's accurate in my humble opinion now here we got the uh, like I showed you there now this is another different satellite model and this basically just focuses on continental United States. You can see you don't have anything going on there. So there you have it, guys. Uh, we'll wrap this up on uh, Florence for now. And uh, this thing went haywire on me. So we'll wrap this up on Florence for now. You can see here's the thunderstorm. You can punch it up here too if you got a venture sky. There's the Cape Index. Now this is the projected model. Let's go back to today. 8 a.m. Well, it's a little after 9 now. So we'll try to go to 9 a.m. Eh, wants to stay at 8. But anyway, here's the Cape Index. Like I was telling you about atmospheric potential energy. And you can see it here too low joules oh yeah gotta point this one out uh, before I leave you here you can see the some type of frequency emitter out here because you could see the Cape index I got it punched up on thunderstorm inside these lines straight lines 26 much higher see it drops way down they must have thrown out some vinegar over here in, in Cuba and over in uh, the DR 